Second kind of economic moat, switching costs. Very simple. Does the cost of switching to a competing product outweigh the benefits? What you want to do is look for companies that integrate with the company or customer's business. So the upfront costs of implementation get huge payback from renewals. Think about an Oracle database, for example. If you're P&G, if you're Citigroup, and you're running on an Oracle database, ripping that out is virtually impossible. It's not impossible, but it's really, 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 really hard. I mean, if, if, if you showed up today, I mean, if Google, for example, built an amazing database and showed up to P&G and said, we've got Google Base, and it's 15% faster and 20% cheaper than Oracle's best product, P&G would say, yes, and I will have to spend hundreds of millions of dollars and however many man hours ripping out what I have now, and my business will probably blow up when I do that. So the switching costs are very high. And so Oracle can raise price 2 to 3% every year. See this a lot with uh, enterprise software companies. You also see it with data processors, people that integrate tightly with the customer's business. You can also sell an ongoing service relationship. So think of um, elevators. Once you have an elevator in a building, it probably ain't coming out again. Um, and so you get elevator companies like Otis, which is part of United Technologies, uh, Cone, which is a Finnish company, Schindler, which is German. And their goal is to have a high what's called attach rate to attach a service contract to the elevator. Because once that elevator is in there, it ain't coming out again. And so you get this long service relationship. Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce typically sells its jet engines on what's called power by the hour. They actually sell it, and then you pay for it based on how much you use it. You don't just pay for it up front, and then someone else maintains it. So that's a way of increasing the switching cost. And then you can provide a product with a very high benefit to cost ratio. A uh, favorite example here is a company called Fastenal here in the US. You know, if you have one bolt on your assembly line that goes down, and then you have a whole bunch of unionized guys standing around basically getting paid for not doing anything, you will pay a lot of money to get that bolt back on the line really quickly. And so that product doesn't have a very high economic cost in terms of how much you spend for the bolt, but has a huge benefit to your organization. You, uh, Fuchs Petrolube, uh, or Lubrizol, which Berkshire bought a while back, same thing, lubricants. If you have a lubricant, that can increase the uptime of a giant mining machine down in a hole by 10%. So you don't have to take it down for maintenance as often. You don't have to take it apart and lube everything. And you get more productivity out of it. And that lubricant costs even 20% more than the competing lubricant. It's such a tiny cost of the overall part, of the overall cost of running that machine. Why not? So this high benefit cost ratio is really a cool thing to look for when you're looking for businesses with switching costs.